Is there one location in British Columbia safe from Mother Nature? We asked 12 experts that question, and as you can imagine, it was nearly impossible. It's hard to find somewhere in BC that doesn't have exposure to hazard. It's a hard question to answer. Others thought this was a great idea. It's very interesting. Actually, it's come up in numerous conversations. I think it's a fantastic idea. Super idea, I think, to, to create conversation. When layering all the hazards from floods, earthquakes, landslides, wildfires, and tsunamis, some locations clearly didn't make the cut. Anywhere in the in the central interior, you know, uh, Penticton, Summerland, Cranbrook, Kimberley. I mean, I hate to say that because they're they're going to freak out uh, when I when they hear me when I say that, but they are they are at risk. It's earthquake zones that I would avoid if I really could choose part of Delta goes in, that's that's a large mass and that's, you know, it's a rock in the water, right? That's what's causing a tsunami. There's a lot of places, especially along the coast, uh, where we're now beginning to experience like a mix of coastal flooding um, from big storms coming in, sea level rise compounded with heavy rain events. So Haida Gwaii, the west coast of Vancouver Island, Victoria is right up there as well. Uh, as we move south into Puget Sound, we tend to see more earthquakes. British Columbians are no strangers to destruction and devastation. 619 people died during the heat dome. And just this year, more than 400 properties have been ravaged by fires in Canada's worst wildfire season ever. British Columbia has seen some high impact weather, some severe things occur and the impacts of flooding, of fires, of poor air quality, and all of those things are projected to continue. It's important to note there will always be risks. No place is safe, absolutely guaranteed, 100% safe from everything. And so when we're choosing places, we have to balance trade-offs for different hazards. We push the experts to narrow down the safest locations based on their areas of expertise. The goal is to create a conversation around climate change and the increasing risk to people who call this province home. There's parts of the North Shore that are good for landslides because your your foundations can be on bedrock, but there's also lots of creeks and gullies that can have debris flows. Areas in the mid coast and the west side of Vancouver Island would be the places where we would not likely to see fires. Um, you know, currently very much, and even in the future with climate change, not likely to see a lot of fires. The the center of the province, it's it's that region from north to south, right in the middle of British Columbia is, is the region where we see the fewest earthquakes. Some locations have lower wildfire risk, but are likely to flood. Anywhere you are exposed to water, there is a potential flood risk. Others were great to avoid tsunamis, but are drying rapidly. Um, that pattern is just going to increase with the north, you know, seeing large fires. We even asked provincial officials this question, but we're told they cannot recommend any one community over another. After countless interviews and studying lots of maps, one location does not have really soft soil. It has low landslide potential and liquefaction. In places that are wetter in the province, in places that are not directly at sea level, in places that are off the floodplain, and so uh, large parts of Vancouver and Burnaby are a good example of a region that, that has less of those concerns. The wildfire risk is low in Burnaby, and it's not directly at sea level or in a floodplain. Anything that's a little higher in Burnaby, so that, that ridge along Maywood, Metrotown, where the SkyTrain runs, um, as well as the ridge that runs sort of along Hastings Street over to SFQ um, from a flood perspective. Heavily urbanized areas like the Lower Mainland, um, they're, they're pretty safe. The risk of a Pacific tsunami is very low in the area of Burnaby. It doesn't have a lot of steep slopes, and it's, it's a little further away from the ocean for both sea level rise and tsunami concern. It's on mostly compacted glacial sediments, and so those, uh, we believe, will react fairly well. But even areas here in Burnaby have risks. There are certainly parts of, of Burnaby, for example, that would be flood free, but there there are also parts of Burnaby that uh, are subject to the Fraser River, for example, flooding or Still Creek and the lake itself. 
This doesn't mean people should move to the location, but knowing the risk in your community allows for resiliency. We know climate change is coming. So given we know it's coming, what do we need to do to adapt the communities in which we live and to, mi to mitigate the effects of climate change? Challenging us all to think about climate change at our doorstep. How do we manage our forests so the forests are healthy with lower fire risk? And we need to be looking at managing our river systems so that we have lower flood risk. So we need to consider what we can do to best mitigate those, uh, those reoccurring events. So that we are prepared should disaster strike at home. Alana Kelly, Glacier Media, Burnaby.